Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Walking by Faith podcast. My name is Brittany Shine, and today I want to briefly talk about the experience that I had last night. Um, I was very uh, afraid. Um, I was more anxious than afraid, I guess you would say. There is a difference. <laughs> between the two but I can admit that I was terrorized um I wasn't extremely terrorized to the point where I was just scared for my life but I was I was um I guess being like you know how some people they feel anxious about something or afraid like oh my gosh like this could happen to me or whatever, but it was only the devil that was really just trying to like make me fear him, make me fear, you know, his demons or whatever. So what I experienced last night, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm expressing myself clearly. Um, I'm going to try to explain this the best way that I can. So last night I saw a bunch of evil faces. Um, When I closed my eyes while I was trying to go to sleep, I saw a bunch of, uh, I guess, I guess you could call it demons. I don't really know what I saw, but I know it wasn't, it wasn't angels. It was not of God. It was it was of the devil because it was trying to scare me. It was trying to uh, torment me or whatever. And I didn't know how to, I didn't really know what to do. Um, the only thing that I know how to do is call on the name of Jesus. Um And what it was, it was like a bunch of faces just laughing at me, just like, ha, 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 ha. I didn't hear anything. I just saw it and I knew it was not of God. It was of the devil. And I know that a lot of people are talking about the mark of the beast right now. Um, I've had a couple of dreams, maybe three or four dreams about the mark of the beast, But I don't like to, I really don't like to talk about it that much because I'm not trying to give it glory in any kind of way. It is of the devil. It needs to be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Um, But I'm I'm more so want to discuss this because um, I'm using it as a testimony. Like I really just want to talk about it as a testimony. So... I saw the faces laughing at me and then I felt like the enemy was trying to make me imagine me accepting the mark of the beast, but I would not even accept the imagination. I'm like, no, I re- I rebuke that imagination. I cast down every evil imagination that exalts itself above the mind of Christ And I bind into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so what I did was I did that. I called on the name of Jesus, but the enemy kept laughing at me. He kept laughing at me. And, you know, I was like, okay, what can I do? Lord, I I really don't know what to do. So the Lord, the Lord gave me an idea to just write Jesus on my right hand, just write Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. And that's exactly what I did. And when I did that, as soon as I did that, after I put a line under Jesus on my right hand, I promise you, immediately the torment was gone, the thought, every anxiety, every fear, every feeling of fear or anxiety, everything that was trying to grip me immediately left. Like it immediately went away. And what I realized was 
God was revealing to me that I belong to Jesus. The devil is trying to take ownership of God's people. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we belong to Jesus. We no longer belong to the enemy. He can no longer take ownership of us. So when the Bible talks about the number of the beast when or or even the mark of the beast when people are going to be forced into taking this mark or they would have to take the number in order to buy sell or trade all the enemy is trying to do is take ownership of people he's trying to take ownership of you but god god loves you so much he wants you to know what is going on he wants you to know that you belong to jesus if you have given your life to jesus if you have not even given your life to jesus yet but your heart is on the verge of giving your life to christ god knows your heart and he already knows that you already belong to him all you have to do is just confess it with your mouth that jesus christ is lord All you have to do is just confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is Lord. And if we turn from our sins, if we no longer have a desire to sin, God hears us. He he says, make your requests known to God. If we send God our request to help us get out of Whatever we was living before, however we were living in the past, God, please deliver me from this situation. God, please deliver me from the sin. God, please deliver me from the people that I'm hanging around. God, please deliver me from the TV shows that I'm watching. God, please deliver me from the movies that I'm watching or the music that I'm listening to. God, please deliver me in the name of Jesus. He hears you. He knows your heart. And you don't have to worry. You do not have to worry about your life anymore. Because God is taking ownership of your life now. And when God takes ownership of you, you have everything under control. Everything is in God's hands now. And it's not that your life is just going to be super easy, but when you give your life to Christ, everything is in order. Everything is is how it's supposed to be. Even when it seems like, man, why is this happening? Or why is that happening? Or why is it even happening to me? Why me, Lord? Why not you? I went to Sunday school this morning and... I was listening to um, Sister Anna. She was preaching and she was saying, like, why not you? Like she was mentioning uh, Job in the Bible, how Job was very rich. And he was pleasing in, in God's eyesight. But Satan wanted Job to curse God in his face. And. Job was righteous. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing deserving of punishment. But God said, have you considered my servant Job? Have you? He asked Satan, he said, Satan, what are you doing? And Satan was like, I'm just going to and fro looking to see who I can devour. devour." And God said, hmm, have you considered my servant Job? So it's the same with us. If we if we suffer what does the bible say consider it joy count it all joy when you face various trials was that in james let's go to james let's go to james chapter 1 starting at verse 2 it says my brethren Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, 
lacking nothing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So when we fall into various trials, God is testing us. He's testing us to see if we're going to trust him through those trials that we're going through. For example, I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Texas, including us, my husband and I, we went through a a terrible storm last week where the electricity went out and it wasn't it wasn't the storm that was terrible. It was what we had to go through through the storm. It was it was the electricity going out and of course it was very cold outside it was 19 degrees and we had to just walk by faith we had to really walk by faith the electricity was out for over 24 hours and we finally called one of our brothers and sisters in christ who opened up their homes to us thank you lord jesus But in the midst of those trials, are we going to trust in God? Are we going to call on Jesus? Are we going to still praise and worship the Lord? Or are we going to panic and be anxious? No, we're going to call on the name of Jesus. (laughs) And we're going to we're going to listen to his voice so he can lead us and direct us into to where he would have us to go. Because we if we don't call on Jesus, then we're lost. We're completely lost. Then that's when people should panic. (laughs) But I just wanted to say that this, this, this thing that happened to me last night, it was, it was really just the devil trying to make me fear and when the electricity went out it was a testing time it was like okay what am I going to do am I going to be afraid you know or am I going to keep trusting God in God and my mindset was like okay let's okay if anything goes down we can always do this or that but I cannot lean on my own understanding there were I can't say that I was afraid because I knew God was going to provide, but I was at a point where I'm like, okay, survival mode. If anything goes down, we're going to, we're going to warm up some food in the hot water. If the hot water doesn't work, we're going to use the candle. We're going to do something to keep living and not just sit still. (laughs) We're going to play some Uno. We're going to do something um just to enjoy the day you know no matter how cold it is outside but we always have to call on God first no matter what like even if we think we're not afraid we still have to call on Jesus and ask him to lead us and guide us and direct us to where he would have us to go because had we not called our brothers and sisters we would have still suffered the electricity for the past three days which means it would be eventually the water heater went out. So we would have had no hot water and no electricity. It would have really been a terrible thing to go through. But even through that, even if we had to suffer through that, I knew that God was going to take care of us. He He provides for all of us. And when the sun came back up, it was like, Wow, like I knew it was only temporary. I knew that God was going to to bring the joy and the and the you know the the atmosphere, the the happy atmosphere back into our lives. 
<laughs> you know, when it's cloudy, sometimes it's it can be a little sad. It can seem a little sad, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So that's all I really wanted to talk about, everybody. I just wanted to talk about this testimony and just know that no matter what you go through, God is going to bring you through. It may seem like a long time. It may seem like, man, when is this ever going to end? But God knows. God knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Just trust and believe in Jesus and he will make a way for you. In Jesus' name, amen.